Hey everybody, this is Corbett Barr, and I'm excited today to be talking with Jeff Goings from uh, Tennessee, actually. Jeff has a, a site uh, called Goings Writer, and I became familiar with Jeff um, really just in the past month or two. Um, I think it was maybe from a tweet. Uh, it seems like a lot of big name bloggers follow Jeff, and uh, someone, I think maybe Brian Clark, tweeted out something that Jeff had written. And uh, I took a look and immediately I was really uh, felt connected with his writing and was just really interested in what he had to say. He has a great way of writing. He has a great structure. Um, he writes about a lot of interesting things and it's just a great read in, gen in general. It was a, a blog that I was really happy to find. So Jeff, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Corbin. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to talk with you for a few reasons. Um, first of all, just to, I love meeting people like you and talking about blogging, talking shop. Um, I know that you've had a lot of success recently with the blog, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and also, uh, you have some big news that you just shared last week, which is that you landed a book deal. So I'd like to dive into that in a moment as well. But if we could, um, would you just uh, maybe start by telling us about your connection with writing? Why Why do you write about writing? Why do you feel uh, that you know it's your calling to be a writer? Yeah, well, um, I was part of this coaching program uh, for about a year this past year. I guess it started last September. And we were all kind of sharing our dreams and aspirations. It was this holistic coaching program where you were being coached on, you know, your um, family life, your career path, and uh, just, you know, everything. And it was a very confidential group of 11 people. We were sharing some of our nitty-gritty life struggles and self-doubts and also some of our, our big dreams. And so, uh, you know, somebody asked me what my dream was, and I just thought, well, you know, that's kind of stupid. Uh, you know, I, I'm 28, and, you know, dreaming is, you know, something that you do when you get out of college or something. I have a job, and so uh, I just thought it was stupid. But somebody really pressed me. And I said, well, I guess, you know, my dream is to be a writer. And I'd been writing for my whole life. But I'd never, you know, and I'd written and published some, some pieces and done some freelance work. You know, I'd written for magazines and written articles and things. But, you know, nothing substantial. And I thought, you know, it'd be cool to, like, write a book someday. And that was always a dream in the back of my mind. But it was so far out of reach that I just didn't even consider it within the realm of possibility. So I said, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd like to be a writer. And somebody said, well, you, you don't have to aspire to be a writer. You, you are a writer. So just write. And that was it. You know, that was, that was all the permission I needed to start doing something that really uh, made me come alive. And so I just started writing more than I had ever written before. And maybe a month or so after that, I started this blog. And, uh, and I just started sharing my passion for the craft. And people kind of started jumping along and following along in, in the journey. That's really cool. Um, I love that it started so organically, just somebody asking what you were interested in and uh, what, you, what you felt deep down. I think there's a lot of people who are afraid to admit to themselves what they really want out of life, or or maybe they've just never sat down to really think about it. Um, so, so you started the blog basically to explore your love of writing and to connect with other people on the same sort of subject. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting because the the blog, the domain, uh, I think I've had for like two years, mm -hmm. and I've been blogging for you know about six years. I think I started with a Zanga, and then you know had like a blogger blog for a while, and then I was blogging uh, on this you know independent blogging platform for a while, and uh, and so you know I had been writing these articles for websites just you know infrequently, and I thought I need to have like a a place where I you know can like a landing zone. So I created this like static website using. Um, you know, a WordPress website. And it was just like, want to hire me for my writing services. It was just a place where people could go to find out more about me. And that just kind of sat there for about, you know, two years. And then I would randomly publish, you know, something on, on the blog part of it, but it was mostly just a static website. And so then I, you know, one late night in January, I was, uh, 
uh, really <laughs> kind of just frustrated. And I've talked about this in some articles on Copy Blogger and get kind of mixed reactions on it. But frankly, I was just frustrated with all of the mediocre writers out there. Uh, and there's really good writers online too, but there's a lot of just, you know, okay writers who have these huge blog followings. And I, and I just, I was like, what is the deal with this? This is so frustrating. Here I am, uh, somebody who, you know, is, is, I think, a decent writer, and I've, you know, I've got nothing to show for it. So um, out of frustration and envy, which I do not think are the best motivators, <laughs> but they're what got me going, w- late one night I, you know, called one of my friends and I said, help me get this off the ground. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to set up a, you know, a website like this. And, you know, and he helped me. And, uh, and I, and, and I just started, but yeah, I mean, it, it started really, I launched the website in February and I just started blogging about writing and I, I really didn't have any sort of intentions. I think in the back of my mind, I knew that authors needed some sort of platform and it, you know, doing that with a blog is a great way to do it. And I saw people who had done it before. So in the back of my mind, I thought that was what I was going for, but I just, started writing about writing because I was falling back in love with this thing that I had done my whole life and and I was and I was doing it and I somebody had given me permission to do it just for the love of doing it and so I felt compelled to do the same for others. Did you have any specific goals when you started the blog other than just to sort of, you know, gain a following? Did you intend to try to get a book deal? <clears throat> um and if not, you know, how have those goals sort of changed over the past, you know, 10 months? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I wanted to get a book deal. Uh, did I have a goal or like a deadline? No. And, and I thought it would take a while. I thought it would take years. Mm-hmm. And so my biggest fear, and, and anybody who's been blogging for a while on the same blog uh, can probably relate to this, my biggest fear was starting over. Mm. So I had been blogging for four years on this blog that had a decent following, but I had no engagement, you know, so I was getting like, you know, I was crazy about my traffic, and so I was measuring every day, it was like between 200 to 400 unique visitors, um, which was fine, you know, it was it was good, and I had just broken my back over that blog, I thought, to really make it what it was, and it took four years, and I thought, man, I don't want to start over, I don't want to start this over, and but it, I mean, it was. I lo- I've learned so much through the process. I mean, I started that blog back in the day when you had blog rolls, <laughs> and like I would email you because I liked your blog, and I would say, "Hey, let's link to each other's blogs so that we can help boost each other's uh, Alexa scores." Right. And and that's that was like my mentality. And so I had to relearn how to blog when I when I started this this new thing. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I, I I wanted to do that. I wanted to publish a book, but I just thought that was years down the line because I was starting over. Do you mind if I ask, what what were you blogging about at the old blog and um, what do you think was wrong with that approach? Well, um, yeah, so the old blog, and I'd be happy to share the URL. Um, I work for a, a nonprofit organization and uh, it's, a, it's a Christian mission organization. So we send churches and individuals on mission trips. So, um, so every staff member gets a blog through this organization and so this was just my staff blog and so I would I would blog about everything and that's what I think was wrong I wrote about uh, my life and my family and my faith and what I ate for breakfast you know it was just I, like I think I had some focus you know there was like a general theme but I battled the thing that I think a lot of bloggers do when they kind of wake up and, and, you know, and and force themselves to get to the keyboard. Like, what am I going to blog about Mm -hmm. today? You know, is it going to be this random thought that I had about whatever? Because I mean, the the options are so many. It was, it was basically a personal blog. It's about me and whatever I think about whatever I want to talk about today. And the problem was I would write a review of a book I read or talk about a concert that I went to and I would see a bunch of visitors come in, you know? And so then I would chase that. And I think the problem was I was chasing traffic, not focusing on writing about the thing that I was supposed to be writing about. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I mean, the irony is I was writing about everything and I was, I was actually really concerned about traffic. And I plateaued, you know, at this, at this level. 
and I would chase anything that would bring in a few extra visitors, and I think that was actually undermining the process of building a long-term dedicated audience. And so the irony is, you know, starting this new blog, uh, all I wanted to do was get back to where I was with the old blog. If I, if I did that, I thought, I'll be fine, you know, in terms of traffic, subscribers, all of that. So I did that in like a month or two. Mm-hmm. And then pretty quickly, I doubled the traffic and then quadrupled it. And so the irony is, you know, very quickly, I did the thing that I had been working so hard to do with the other blog by limiting my options and focusing on, you know, a, a pretty uh, focused topic. Can you, uh, can you, do you think you could distill the breakthrough that you made that, that allowed you to do so well in the first month and, um, and to, and then ultimately to grow your traffic much bigger than it was before. And, um, also to connect with your audience so well, because, um, I noticed that you get a ton of comments and really seem to have a really engaged audience. So what was the, what was the fundamental thing that you changed about this new blog that allowed you to grow so quickly? I think I did two things, or I mean, rather, two things happened. Uh, one was I start. I, I focused. You know, I, I focused on one topic, and I've talked about this before in, in you know, different. Um, I think I talked about this in like a guest post at, at Pro Blogger or something. But I, I thought I was pretty good, and you know, I talked about all these mediocre writers and how I was better than them, and I was going to beat them at their own game. And I realized in the process that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And I realized that I was taking all of these lessons that I had learned from freelance writing and college English courses and trying to inject them into the blogosphere. Instead of realizing and respecting that blogging is an art form in itself, and I had to relearn how to write for this new medium. So, I mean, I, I learned how to blog, you know, this year. Not, I mean, I've been doing it for six years and I really learned how to do it this year. So I, I respected the medium for what it was and I became a student of, of, you know, everything that copy blogger puts out and and a lot of people that contribute to their site. I just started studying all of these people who had done it, you know, Chris Brogan and Leo Babauta. And I am like, how do they build their audiences? What did they do that was unique to them? and, And how could I learn from them? And in doing that, I, people started to show up and I started to take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. And so instead of writing a 20 minute article, I started writing two hour articles, you know, which was, which required some sacrifice on my part, but I didn't just start rushing to get content out, you know, the day of, I started writing ahead and I started really taking it more seriously. So I, I think focusing was a really important part, not only on a topic, but realizing that people were coming and showing up and I really needed to bring my A game, which was a big mental shift for me. Just wanting to, sh- you know, show them the best that I had to offer. And then the other thing that I did that I, I can't deny, you know, how much it's caused me to get in front of people, uh, is I, yeah. So a few months down the line, I wrote a manifesto. Mm-hmm. I wrote, uh, my ebook called the writer's manifesto. It's a short, Little thing. It's disingenuous to call it uh, an ebook because it's only 900 words. And, uh, but it was about this thing, you know, this thing that had happened to me falling in love with writing. And it was about not writing to get published, not writing for traffic, but writing for the love mm-hmm. of writing. And I, I wrote that and I gave it away just to try to build some. Uh, subscribers to my email newsletter, which was like 75 people at the time. And so I wrote it. I sent it out to some people that I thought it would resonate with. And a few people endorsed it. Uh, Eventually, I sent it to Seth Godin, and and he endorsed it. Um, And within a week, my newsletter list went from 75 to 1,000 people. And that was a big breakthrough for me. So that was a few months down the line. That wasn't right at the beginning. Uh, but, and I didn't, I don't know that I did it intentionally. I just wrote something and I wanted to, you know, I I knew that writing an ebook was a great way to generate subscribers. And so I, I did that and I had this thing that I had written and I just kind of threw it together and got some feedback and tried to make it as good as I could, but then I put it out there. And in doing that, 
looking back now, I realize I, I created this manifesto for my mm -hmm. tribe. And it really is what I'm about, about writing not for acclaim or accolades, but really truly doing anything, primarily because you love it. And then the paradox is you'll get rewarded for it. So you don't do it for the reward, but the paradox is if you do something because you love it, people are going to love you for that. They're going to support you. They're going to surround you, and they're going to want to help you succeed. And uh, I wrote that manifesto. Lots of people continue to read it and resonate with it. And uh, it's been a great way to introduce myself to new readers. And if they resonate with that, they're probably going to enjoy a lot of my other writing. Something I've uh, observed in your writing, not only with that manifesto, which is maybe the shortest ebook I've ever read. I know people tell me like, oh, I haven't read it yet. I go, do you have 10 minutes? <laughs> like, yeah, maybe you should on the front page you should say, you know, it's like, I mean, not even 10 minutes. It's, it's short. Right. But um, yeah. something I've noticed is that you really seem to appreciate brevity or you, you seem to put a lot of stock in boiling your thoughts down into something, you know, really distilling them. Whereas a lot of people, I think, because they're blogging, they feel like it's almost like journaling and they just want to just write whatever comes to mind and they don't do the work for the reader necessarily. Is that intentional that, that you boil things down so much or do you sort of think in those bite-sized chunks of information? You said, you mentioned that you spent a couple of hours writing blog posts, um, and yet some of them are, are very compact. So I assume that a lot of that time is spent just crafting each individual sentence and word. Yeah, I mean, it probably takes me, yeah, it is intentional. And it probably takes 15 to 20 minutes to write a thousand words for me. I mean, I can write really quickly. Uh, and it is not natural for me to think in terms of brevity. I am, I talk too much, you know, you can ask my wife, I'm, you know, you ask me a question and I just sort of ramble on. But when I write, uh, there's the perfectionist tendency in me that I think a lot of artists and writers and even bloggers may experience. It has to be good. It has to be really good. I have to be proud of it. And so I'll write something and then, you know, I might, may spend 20 minutes on it, but then I'll spend another hour and a half editing and I learned that by coaching people when I was in college. I was a writing tutor, and I learned that all good writing is rewriting. You know, I mean, every draft, every first draft mm. is terrible. And just accepting that that's the norm and understanding that you're always going to have to go back and rewrite, I mean, that just became habit for me. So, um, so I, you know, I, I knew that I uh, only wanted to share my very best stuff with my audience and do it on a regular basis. You know, I mean, I could sit and edit stuff for weeks if I wanted to. But yeah, I mean, every article is is edited and I am a scanner. I'm an impatient reader and so I'm scanning most of the content that I read on blogs anyway, so I want to make sure that I'm not wasting anybody's time and I'm so particular about what I read. I don't want a lot of fluff. I want to um I want to be moved and so I I write towards that end, I write towards, you know, creating something that I think I would want to read. So you mentioned, uh, or actually we mentioned at the opening, um, that you had some really exciting news. I believe it was last week, which is that you signed a book deal and, um, that it came about in sort of an unusual way. I think most people spend, uh, weeks or months or years putting proposals together and shopping them around and hoping for some publisher to bite. Um, but your experience was a little different. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, um, it's funny. Before I understood ebooks or manifestos or anything, I wrote a, a manifesto for a site like two years ago um, called Change This, which uh, some of your listeners, viewers might be uh, familiar with. It's, uh, it's a site that I think Seth Godin helped launch, and it's basically a place where you can write a manifesto and if people like it, you know, you write a proposal, people like it, they vote on it, and then you you publish it. I think they publish one a month or something like that. And it's just, it's about changing one thing. So it's changethis.com, and everybody from, like, Chris Brogan to Seth Godin to, um, uh, gosh, you know, a number of other, uh, Guy Kawasaki, a bunch, of, a bunch of writers and authors and bloggers and entrepreneurs have written for them. So I wrote this, this thing about... Um, 
uh, sort of the, the work that I do and, and some of the personal experiences that I've had with uh, poverty and humanitarian work and just finding your life's work. And, and, I, and so I wrote this manifesto. And it just, you know, I wrote it and shared it and, you know, forgot about it. And so this publisher found this ebook, uh, and they contacted me after they found out about my blog. And so it, the manifesto in and of itself didn't garner the attention or you know, interest of the, uh, of the publisher. The blog did. But then when they were looking at my blog, they saw that I'd written this manifesto years ago. And they read it, and they liked it, and they emailed me. And they said, have you thought about turning this mm -hmm. into a book? And I said, no, I haven't thought about that. I forgot that I wrote that, you know. And, uh, and they said, well, we love, you know, your... Your, the audience that you're building, and we love your voice, and we love this manifesto. We'd love to talk with you about it. So, you know, we spent a month or two kind of talking about what that would look like, and they helped me flesh out the idea. So I never wrote a book proposal. I never, like, intentionally went out and got an agent. I mean, it all just sort of came to me because I had spent time building an audience, and I had written something that was of interest, and they wanted to partner with younger people who had a voice that would um, reach people my age. And so uh, they wanted to partner with me to do that. And, um, and so in the process, I'm like, oh, I better get an agent to make sure I'm represented. And I had a friend who's an agent. I called him and he said, I'd love to do that. And so, I mean, it really just kind of came together um, pretty quickly. And uh, apparently, you know, that is not the norm. So I don't want to uh, you know, build any sort of false expectations in, in people, but um, th but I've heard other people doing it too. So it's by no means like the mm -hmm. rarest thing to happen. And you know, I mean, if you build some sort of platform that generates the attention of an audience, publishers, you know, if you're interested in working with any sort of traditional publisher, they're really interested in partnering with people who understand authors who understand marketing. Sorry, somebody's just banging on a car outside. I don't know if you can hear that, but <laughs> I'll cut that out. Anyway, um, awesome. Well, congratulations on the book deal, because I think as a writer that, you know, I know that the world is changing, that a lot of people are talking about publishing just electronically or just blogging and not worrying about getting right. a book deal. But I think still, uh, for those of us have, that have held on to a book and read it and loved it, it's still an honor to have a published yeah. book. And, and I think it can lead to a whole lot of, interesting opportunities and you're just going to learn from the process and there's no reason not to do it um, unless you're just trying to make a buck or something but I think you're doing this for for other reasons so that's that's pretty awesome um, would you mind yeah. if we uh, talk a little bit about numbers um, you shared an email yeah. with me that was pretty interesting before we scheduled this interview about how your traffic has just grown so incredibly over the past nine months and you know I, I want to make sure that people understand that um, this isn't an overnight success story because y you've been crafting your, you know, your ability to write for your whole life. It sounds like you were blogging before, and sometimes it just takes putting the pieces together and looking at things in a different way to really start growing um, almost overnight in in this new incarnation. Um, so congratulations on that as well. But tell us sort of what has happened this year, and and if you could just maybe share most recent month tell us about how many visitors or something that you have just so we have a sense yeah yeah happy to do that I may actually try to pull up my analytics while we're talking <clears throat> um, well like I said uh, I all I wanted to do was catch up to my old blog and so my old blog was getting about 200 to 400 unique visitors uh, per day uh, which is really decent traffic. And I was told, you know, based on blogs that I had been reading, that that was enough to start monetizing. And, you know, I'd heard all these things. But I had, like, you know, one or two comments for every post. And I just didn't feel like I was making a, a difference. So I didn't care about the traffic. I wanted to connect with people. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, I, and I had built it up to a, a page rank of three. Um, and that had taken four years. So I was really scared to, to start over. Um, but yeah, I started, I started blogging, and the first day I launched, I had 600 unique visitors. And so I had emailed all my friends and talked about it on Facebook and Twitter. But that was really exciting to me because basically in a single day, my first day of launching, 
I had more than you know the norm for my old blog. So I knew that there was something to this. And but the next day, you know, it was it was down to like mm-hmm. fifty or something. And so I spent the next couple of months just building. And every day, I mean, I was checking stats multiple times a day, which is not productive. Uh, but I was, you know, I, I was obsessed. And I wasn't seeing a lot of engagement, wasn't seeing a lot of subscribers. And I had all of the pros said, guest post, guest post, guest post. So I started guest posting. And that was probably, I mean, you asked about breakthroughs before. That was, that's something that is still like my biggest uh, strategy, you know, for generating traffic getting in front of people. And I think there's more to guest posting than the, you know, the most unique visitor that I've ever had in a day, guest posting at a single site. It's mm-hmm. like a hundred. I mean, it's not a ton. But there's this long tail effect where, you know, if you do a guest post on copy blogger or pro blogger, or whoever is sort of like the industry leader in whatever your niche is, there is this perceived authority. People begin to start recognizing your name and, um, you know, and those articles, you know, are usually pretty highly indexed on, on search engines and, and people can uh, find them. And, and usually if there's a, a link there, you know, that's going to lead to long-term subscribers and it's going to, you know, build your, your page rank. So, um, yeah, so I mean, the first big uh, guest post that I got, I think, was with ProBlogger. And, you know, I got probably... Uh, I got like a 100 to 150 new subscribers um, pretty quickly as a result of that. And it had taken me a month or two to, to, to get that many subscribers before. And so I go, wow, this, there's something to this. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I, um, you know, I really started to turn a new leaf maybe May or, or June when I released my, uh, my ebook, got 1,000 email subscribers in a week and and then I, I just I really started to go after lots of aggressive guest posting I was able to connect with Sonia Simone on Twitter and and I said hey I'd love to write a guest post for copy blogger I had written I had like pitched them um, via email and they had sent me the you know sort of template um, email that says you know we're not accepting any guest posts right now but I, I was able to connect with Sonia. I sent this email. I followed up multiple times. They were interested, and then eventually published that piece. And then I've, I think I've done one other one since then, and written multiple times for Pro Blogger and lots of other friends and and you know blogs on on the web that talk about writing or blogging or, or social media. And uh, yeah, I mean, my last month, I'm going to pull it up uh, because uh, it was probably my biggest month. To date, in terms of traffic, it was uh, I think it was about two hundred thousand um, visits. I'm going to see how many of those are unique visitors. So I mean, you know, I the past couple of months have really mm-hmm. compounded a lot. You know, I was I was probably at a thousand visitors a day uh, for uh, you know a couple of months. Um, I was in that that ballpark, and then recently it's it's been as high as had a couple of really big spikes that I think are aberrations, you know, which I'll talk a little bit more about. But I mean, I've had days where I've had you know twenty, thirty thousand unique visitors in a day, which is not the norm. But I had a couple of posts that essentially went viral. Um, one was this post about. Uh, uh, what was it? Three uh, reasons to travel when you're young. Like, well, th- that one is yeah. That that one went viral uh, in in an in organic way, uh, which has had a lot of fruit attached to it. The one before that was like book writing ideas for uh-huh. uh, young people or something, and um, book I- what is it? Book ideas for young people. And I I researched that keyword. I was I was just looking at. Uh, Google, you know, I mean, I, I read a little bit about keyword research. I don't, I don't do like the SEO stuff a ton, but I read a bunch about keyword research, and I was looking at. I mean, if you Google keyword, you'll find this this keyword estimator that you can use to see what keywords you should be focusing on for your website. And I saw this term, book ideas for young people, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm a young person. I want to write a book. I'll just do like the 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 list 
post. You know, I'll just do a quick list. And and so I did that. And somebody, somebody, maybe me, maybe I did it because I do this on occasion. I stump, I you stumble upon to vote for one of my posts, and I shared it on Stumble Upon, and it got, you know, tens of thousands of stumbles and and votes, and that was. Um, like not that great. Like that, that traffic didn't convert to subscribers really. Um, people found it. It continues to be, you know, a, a traffic generator for the site. And, um, you know, that page now ranks pretty highly when you Google book ideas or book ideas for young people. But, um, you know, so that was, that was fine. I was like, okay, this isn't, you know, this is a big aberration. This is not going to be something that's really going to convert because, if anybody has ever used stumble upon, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like you're just clicking this button and hit a website, you go, "Okay, I don't care about this." So it's high bounce rate, you're just you're just going through the traffic. Um but then I wrote this article uh actually while I was traveling over the summer about why you should why you should travel, why young people should travel. And I am a big proponent of of traveling the world, seeing the world if you can. And um it was based on a conversation that I had with this uh, young woman who was um, about to was deciding whether or not she wanted to go to graduate school or travel the world, and I was like, "Dude, travel! If you can do it, you should travel." And so I wrote this post about that. It, it was a very passionate plea: if you can uh, travel, because you will never have this opportunity like you do now uh, to see the world with full reckless abandon. So if you if you can go. And I wrote that months ago, and then just randomly, I'm looking at my stats one day, and I'm like, "Oh, I had 10,000 visitors yesterday. What is that about?" Uh, you know, and at the time, I was you know getting like one to two thousand visitors a day, and so I mean, it was tenfold the traffic that I was seeing. And I I tracked it down, and basically, some student group in Singapore found this article, shared it on Facebook, and the thing spread organically. Like one leader of this student group, this, you know, this just group of, uh, this campus group uh, at this college in Singapore, he shared it, and then they just started, you know, sharing it and liking it on Facebook. You know, it's very easy to share with your circle of friends on Facebook, and it just like spread. There was no big, I mean, any time that I've seen any big spike, uh, in traffic, it's always been because some influencer, you know, somebody like a Brian Clark or a Darren Rouse tweets something or, you know, links to it from their blog or whatever. And I was trying to find the linchpin, you know, the big influencer who shared this. And it, and it wasn't really. It was one person who had some connection with some people and they had apparently been talking about traveling in, in their group or whatever. And he just shared it with his, you know, few hundred friends on Facebook. And then it just started... <clears throat> They just started sharing it with with everybody that they knew, and it's funny because I'm I'm seeing the comments come in, I'm seeing people retweet it, and I'm seeing where people are from on Twitter. And it, I saw I, I saw the the article essentially move around the world. It went from Singapore to Malaysia to the Philippines, uh, and, and apparently, like you know, these areas of the world, there you know, there's a lot there's um, a lot of people travel you know in that area because it's easy mm -hmm. and apparently affordable um and and this is just kind of a, a hot button thing for you know young people college students and eventually you know i started seeing people from you know portugal and in south america and you know, brazil and all over the world they're sharing this this little post and, I, and a lot of that traffic did convert i mean i got hundreds of new followers on twitter pretty quickly um Hundreds of hundreds of subscribers within a couple of weeks once this thing happened, and and it continues to to bring in a lot of traffic. I mean, if you look at the the post, I mean, it's gotten shared like seventy thousand times, eighty thousand times on Facebook, uh, two thousand times on Twitter. Yeah, uh, it really yeah, it's, went it's pretty impressive. And viral. it's interesting how it can just come from somewhere totally unexpected like that. Um, did you happen to find those stats? Did you want to share something? I did, yeah. So, um, okay, so from November 12th to December 12th, uh, I've had 119,000 visits and 90,000 wow. unique visitors. And uh, I'll look at the month of November, which is where this thing was kind of the most, you know, crazy. 
and see what that looks like. Yeah, and that that was the bigger month where the you had the big peak. I mean, wow. one day I had forty thousand visits. <laughs> <laughs> so that that month, the month of November was two hundred four thousand visits That's and one hundred sixty two meeting visitors. That's really and, cool. Yeah, and I, I wrote about this because, uh, like, what do you do after that? Like, what do you do the next day? Uh, or the, I mean, because really this all happened over the course of a week. And w what do you do after that? And the reality was a lot of the people went away. You know, I didn't convert all 162 mm -hmm. unique visitors to subscribers. Uh, but, but a lot of them did hang around, and it's been really cool to continue to connect with those people. But I just had to go back to work, you know, I just had to start writing again, and that was a bit of an anomaly, you know, it's not the norm, I'm not counting on doing it, and the old me would have tried to chase that and try to replicate it, or, you know, take advantage of it, and I, I didn't really do that, you know, I just, I was like, oh, that's cool that that really moved people, but um, I've got to just, you know, Such go a back cool to story. work. Such a cool story, and you've shared a ton of really great advice. I'm wondering if if you were talking to someone who was maybe really struggling with a blog that they had had for a while, sort of like you were in the beginning, or somebody who's just starting out and doesn't really understand uh, what blogging is all about or what it takes necessarily to build an audience, could you just give us a few points of advice that you would give to someone like that um, to really help them make things take off? Well, I, th I think the, the most important thing that I've learned is mm -hmm. serving other people adding value to their lives first. And there are a lot of bloggers that I know, you know, and, and everybody kind of has their own little circles that they run in, but a lot of the people that I know uh, blog because they like to write, you know, so I, I speak to a lot of writers, and they do what, what I did for years, where they try to translate uh, things that they write for themselves to uh, a blog. And it doesn't work like that. And, and sometimes people say that I'm, you know, being contradictory where I'm saying, well, you need to write for the love of it. And then I'm saying, well, you need to serve your audience and you need to write for your audience. And I think both of those are true. And so what I've learned is they're not always one and the same. I don't feel compelled to, you know, share every piece of writing on my blog. I used to do that. I used to just feel like, oh, okay, I wrote this essay. I need to share it here. And people didn't care. I was hearing crickets and you know, was feeling all disappointed. Well, the reality is I didn't write that for that audience. And the internet is kind of a, a weird thing. And a lot of people are looking for helpful, resourceful information. And so there are a lot of great websites. There are a lot of great news sites. There are a lot of uh, great websites that are sharing, mm -hmm. you know, what you might call art. But I found that one of the best ways to build an audience is to help people, to be a resource, to serve first. And if you do that, you earn permission to speak about other things. And that has been the, the weird thing for me because I was writing about writing, but I knew that I didn't just want to write about writing. And I was really kind of scared. And if I were to go back and do it again, I don't know that I would have done it this way, but it, it did work out. Um, I was scared to write about one thing and then to get pigeonholed as like the writing coach blogger. And so every once in a while, I would, you know, I continue to do this. I'll test the waters by writing something completely off topic. You know, for instance, I wrote a post uh, yesterday about Christmas. And that, and tons of people liked it. It's been my most popular uh, post in the past week or so. And what I'm learning is if you help people, you earn the right mm -hmm. to talk about whatever you want to talk about within reason. Because we like writers, not because they just talk about one thing. We like writers because of their voice, their unique perspective. But if I don't know you from, you know, Adam, what's going to make me want to care about your voice? You're going to have to prove to me that you have something worthwhile to share. And the best way to do that, the best way to, you know, help uh, build trust and rapport with a potential reader is, is to just help them, resource them, give them some, something that will help them, inspire them, challenge them. You will earn the right to share other pieces of your voice. And the thing that I'm finding is uh, people care less and less about me sticking so much to writing. And I always talk about that because I love it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I can talk about other things now. And it's not a big deal. And I mean, if you look at any of the big bloggers that we, you know, a lot of us, a lot of your readers would probably admire, it, they're doing that too. You know, I, I don't go to Seth Godin's blog and go, oh, right. shucks, he didn't talk about marketing today. You know, he, he can talk about politics or the economy or uh, food service. He can talk about whatever he wants because he's done that over time. He's diversified what he talks about. And I just love his voice. He has the most unique perspective on the world that I will listen to whatever he has to say because he has helped me so much through generosity, giving away all kinds of free, helpful, interesting information that he can talk about whatever he wants. And I'm paying attention because a great I want to hear what he has to um, say. So what's next for you and the site? Uh, what should we expect from, from Goings Rider? Well... I am going to be launching something soon. So uh, I don't know what it is, and I'm looking to my audience to help me with that, but I would like to create maybe a course or a coaching program. I'd like to offer an opportunity for my readers to go to the next level in their writing. So something more than, you know, a uh, if, if people have needs that, you know, a daily post or email newsletter can't satisfy. That's what I'm interested in. And so I've been, did a survey last week and, and got a ton of responses and still filtering through those. I'll be building something probably over Christmas break and the new year and going into January and launching that sometime in, in January or February. But um, I don't know what it is and I'm looking to the audience to help me uh, build it, but it'll probably be some sort of awesome. well, writing I, uh, course. I would definitely program. be interested in that. And I think uh, the people who read Think Traffic definitely will as well. So let us know when that comes out. And um, I just want to say thanks for coming on and, and yeah. so transparently sharing all of your tips and tricks and um, congratulations on all the success that you've had. I really appreciate it, Jeff. All right. If anybody wants yeah, to find out more about fun. Jeff, check out his writing and what has made him so popular over the past uh, 10 months or so, go to goingswriter.com and uh, I'll include links to that at the bottom of the video. So thanks a lot for watching.